Hey guys, welcome back to another <clears throat> video. Today we're going to be building a small 5x5 piston door. Here it is. It's not compact. Bottom's quite compact. Top's not compact, but that's fine. So, let's just show you open and close. Let me turn down my volume. So all the glass blocks you see that are black because it looks nice are blocks that can be whatever you want. These blocks that are quartz need to be solid. So here's the opening. The reuse on the top is a little slow. But that's just because of this dropper thing. But I'll explain that later. So I will show you it piece by piece. I will show you the top closing. And if you look in here, I will do the same thing. There we go. And then I will show you the bottom working. And there's no cooldown time. So, just because this is here, there's no cooldown time. Because by the time it closes, all the items are already in there. So, this, so the second it closes, I'll show you it again. I think we all the pistons to go. So I'm going to be doing the tutorial for this, and the size will be a 5x9 area, and then if you're building this in survival underground, if you have a floor level, you want to dig under the four, four, box, four blocks down, and then your floor will be the fifth one. So the resources are what you see in this chest. So you want... Not, you want 98 observers, 51 sticky pistons, 3 normal pistons, 3 obsidian, and you want a bunch of building blocks. So get around one stack of building blocks. Hang on a second, I'll tell you the exact amount. So if you're not color coding this, then I'll tell you the amount. You're gonna need 52 blocks. Just get in, just get one stack of blocks just in case. And if you're not if you are color coding this, you need nine white wool, ten red wool, sixteen light gray wool, five gray wool, three orange, four lime wool, five purple wool, ten cyan wool. You need 15 solid blocks in the door, and then you need about 89 blocks of whatever you want that cannot conduct redstone power. It can be glass, but don't make it like redstone blocks or observers. It doesn't work like that. And don't make it unmovable. Make things like, you can do glowstone for the glass if you want. But the s smooth quartz, quartz, whatever you're making needs to be solid. Um, you need one dummy block, so any block that cannot, that's like glass so that doesn't conduct redstone power like an observer or some or something immovable like obsidian. You need three sand or you can have two cyan concrete powder or red concrete powder for one. You need six slabs, 27 repeaters, six comparators, three redstone dust, one redstone block, um, one redstone lamp, one iron trapdoor of any or any trapdoor of any type. Anything to redirect a piece of redstone, but I'm using a tripwire hook. It doesn't because you can't spam it or anything. You need three droppers, you need eight hoppers, you need a furnace, and then you need three items of any choice, and then one item of your choice, so four. You need nine powered rails or detector rails, four torches, and I also forgot about this. You need three obsidian or any immovable block. 
that is solid, so not a hopper. So like a dropper. So those are the materials to make this door. I will run this door a little differently and I will also explain how the door works. So let's get into the tutorial. Just use the materials again, just to show. So this tutorial is gonna work with the piston layout. The inputs are the necessities, so the inputs, the input circuit, the bottom closing, the top closing, the bottom opening, the top opening, and then for the bottom, the green circuit, which is the quad retraction, and then the extra moves on the top, which will finish the door. So this might be a long video because I'm explaining how it works, and let's get started. So you want to get out sticky pistons, and I'm just going to use quartz blocks to build this, and the glass just to. Sh I'm actually not going to. Yeah, I'm going to use the glass. So the gl I'm actually going to use white stained glass to show what needs to be solid and what needs not to be. So. Start off, you need your 9 by 5 by fifteen, so fifteen by five by nine, six hundred and seventy-five blocks here, and we're gonna start with the piston layout. So you wanna find the middle, so you wanna go from three blocks from the left, three blocks from the right. And you want to place three sticky pistons in the middle, facing up. I'm going to build this a little bit higher, because you don't need to do this, because I need to get under sometimes, because there's a bunch of observers facing down. So you can see there, 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 and there. So you want three sticky pistons here, and you want to create a 3x3 three three facing upwards like this. I'll give you a little bit of time to do each thing. Next, we're going to show, I'm going to show you how the storage works. So, Storage is a bit interesting. So, if you haven't seen the small 6x6 door video by um, Arma and Johnny, go, go see it now. Because the bottom layout is quite similar because the storage, I need it to have a connection from both sides. So, this is one of the only ways to get it to work. So, I just made the layout like this. So, instead of having three across like this and three across like this. You do something a little bit similar to Arma and Johnny's. What you do is you place one here, one here, place another one here, and then for the second block for this piston, you place it here. So this piston's like this piston here, but it's moved here. And you need, you can have glass there, you can glass there, solid there. And then to get the other one, what you need is sticky piston there, sticky piston there, glass block. And then you can have glass here. And then I'm gonna make the door frame really quick. Like this. So the way that this works is basically I'm gonna get some red some blocks. You don't need you don't need to do this. Is that this, what you see extended is the first layer of pistons. Let me just do this. And what you see extended here is the second layer. So, this just allows us to, this just allows us to make it, the door, a lot more smaller, as you can see. Because if we had two pistons here, it would be impossible to power both of these, maybe in some way, but three would be super hard because of the input that would be here, so that's why we need to lay it like this. Now, we're going to do the side pistons, and then I'm going to show you the blocks that need to be solid. But I'm not going to build the door frame, because I don't like doing that. Actually, I'll do that. To show you guys. So you place your side pistons, five on each side. Next, I'm going to show you all the solid blocks. So I know that there's one solid block here. I don't quite remember the others. It's in a weird formation on the top. 
you want a so your storage is there I th you need one here that's for something an updater you need three like this and you need one like that I believe that's how it is and you also need two here so what you see is all the solid blocks you can fill in the rest with glass I don't usually like doing this but I'm just doing this for showing you There we go. I'm gonna delete some of this. This was failed. So the side pistons will just extend normally. Like. Like this and like. Like that sort of thing. But the top layout is a little bit different. I'm actually gonna make the blocks that in the door, like in the door frame, that are, um, that can be just in the door here, that need to, that can be anything, well, I'm gonna make it black so you can actually see, everything else can be white, so I'm gonna make it black, I'm, gonna make, I'm just gonna make the door frame black, so you can see what's happening, making it easier, I'm gonna make all the door blocks black, there we go, and then I'll come down here, this will allow you to see what's happening better, like I said, so there we go, and I know what's storage and what isn't. So there we go. Now we're gonna show I'm gonna show you how the top is. So the top is a folded triple piston extender, but it's technically a quad extender because of how it works. So what you need is sticky pistons here. No, you need actually sticky pistons here, my mistake. Sticky pistons here. You want your storage blocks there. You want to remove this quickly, place this, place that, place those there, go under and place two sticky pistons like this. So you're probably thinking how is this a quad extender? I'm going to show you. So usually, so the way that this works is that you know your average quad piston extender looks like a trip like this. Like that. And pretend that this is your ceiling on a 5x5 five five door. You need your pistons to come down to here, so that's how it works. So if this is like your ceiling, you need your pistons where this block is, and then you wait a bit, and then it's here. But the way that this works is actually a little bit different, is that we use something called a folded system. And what folded means is basically it's like a fold, like it folds it up, sort of thing. So what I'm about to show you here, it's going to blow your minds in a way. Quad extender. So what I mean by this is that, like I said, you need your piston to get to let's this glass block. It will work the same. I have this, and then look, it's still at the glass block, and this is at the same position as the regular quad. So the way that this works is what I'm showing you. Ah. So what will happen is that when you have a folded system, it's kind of the same thing. You're just pushing the piston down by one. So what I mean by that is if you have four pistons like this, I literally push it down by one like that sort of thing, making it even like this. And now they're equal to create the quad piston extender. So this thing is just a smaller version of a quad piston extender. Let me know in the comments if you don't understand. I'll explain folded things in a different video. So that's the top layout done. 
the side pistons done and now we're gonna move on to the inputs of the door so you want to get out your white wool you want your cyan for something you need a torch you need a repeater for later you need an observer you need rails you need an immovable block and you need slaps so the first thing on your show is you want to place those there just remove those pistons place observers facing down with rails on them you need sticky pistons facing this way you need it and then once you do that you want to place dust like this you can remove your obsidian from your inventory that's all the obsidian you're gonna need place that you're gonna need slabs here with dust and then to fire these pistons is you just place a wool block here you can place an observer there an observer there an observer there or you can do this 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 either is fine i like to do this because I think it looks nice. So that's how you power the top pistons. Now to do the bottom is wait, hold on. You, you need to get. I made a mistake. You need to get out your purple wool just for a second. Just place a rail there. Helps. Now the bottom is a little bit more difficult in a way in where. Since we have this weird layout on the bottom, we have to sort of change how the inputs work. So you need blocks here, and you're probably wondering how we're powering those. I'm going to get to that right now. You need to place this here, place torches, dust, go up here, place a slab. Place this, place dust, and then a four tick here. This is for later. Then on top of these torches, you want to place observers. And the reason why we took out these blocks is because they need to be solid. Like, like if they weren't solid, the door wouldn't work. So that's why. So we're going to place this here, place this here, and place that. So, what this is, this allows us to power the pistons here, where this one is, here, and here, through these blocks. That's why they need to be solid. So, that's really important. And this here is a double piston extender. And you might know the circuit, and if you don't, I'm going to explain it. So, what this is, is just a kind of more complicated version of... this you might have seen this before many other doors that are quite simple along like this one this is not that simple it's kind of so what this does is I'm just gonna power quickly here so this four tick powers from this redstone block because redstone blocks can power four ticks because the way that the game works is when you place a redstone block the game checks is that if there's something for it to power nearby, and if it is, it'll turn on, if it's a repeater in this case, it'll turn on by the amount of delay here. So, it'll power this piston. But then it's extending up, which powers this observer. And it's updating it. And since this block needs to be solid, otherwise, see it doesn't extend. So, it will push up, because it gets updated from this a repeater turning on after four ticks pushing it up one ticking this so if I show you and place a block here you can see that it extends now on the retraction what it is is the exact same thing so when I remove the redstone block the repeater checks the redstone block and says that it's not there so it depowers itself 
I'm going to remove that. And you saw this observer turns on. You're probably wondering, how do we power this piston to retract this block? Is due to a bud. So the, when I retract this, four tick repeater is going to turn off, retracting it down, as you saw. And since it retracted, one tick later, this will power this piston, that this one here, that's here, as a bud. Because this block diagonally powers this. And since it's a bud, and with a one tick, what really happens in the game? This is how the game works. So if I slow down the tick speed, but I can't, because I don't know the command, what will happen is this will retract, and since it's still retracting while this turns on, it will bud the piston and actually give it a 1.5 tick pulse. So yeah, it will give a 1.5 tick pulse. And that's just how this works. So as you see I retracted, that's because of the bud, because if I remove this piston, and I update it, see, that would be from the one tick. So yeah. So, you're seeing how there's no four ticks over here? So what I did instead of the four ticks is I put torches, and then I place slab, um, dust here, with a slab here. Then I have a torch here, with a dust, and this is the four tick. Like, imagine this four tick is that four tick. It will be two ticks slower because of both torches, but that's fine. It will power this, which will power this dust, and then the game checks that the dust is on, which powers the block, which turns off the torch. Then the game realizes that this torch is turned off, which means this dust shouldn't be off. It shouldn't be on, so it'll turn off. And then this will turn on because the game sees that uh, this is off. So this will turn on, and then the observers will power the pistons there. And then when this turns off, it'll turn off this, on turning on this, turning on this, turning this off, retracting it, and then it gets blooded with 1.5 ticks pulse because of the way that the game works. So that's how the double piston extender works. Kind of complicated explanation. So yeah, that's how the double piston extender works. So now what you need is rails and dust and a slab. So. You want to go to the end of your door, over here, at the end of your door, and place an observer facing down. Place a repeater on it, because I don't want it to break. And you want to go all the way to the end, like this, all the way here, go up here, and then I'll show you, and then place an observer up here for later. So what this, so what I'm about to show you is... A cool system I came up with is that you want a rail, I forgot the wool blocks. A rail there, a rail here, I think I went too far, let me check. No, you want to get rid of this and go here. My mistake. Place a rail there, a rail here, rails down, a dust, a repeater, and then this here. So you're probably wondering how we power the pistons. Is that I power this like this. Now, what this does is, it, when the rails turn on, what some people might not know is when rails turn on, it will actually update an observer. So, this repeater will get one tick from this, powering this dust, because it can't be a block because it will power this piston, and it will break, so it will be dust, so it doesn't power that. It will power this rail, then power this rail, then power this rail, and so there's an observer, it will detect and power this piston. To power this one and this one, what we do is we place an observer here, an observer here, it will make, and with that it will make this piston and this piston in sync, but the, we can't have a block here to make it all in sync, and you're probably wondering why, and you think it's just going to work, it's just that the way that this works allows this, the timings of the door, you need a repeater here by the way, and the way that I made the door is that if you place a block here, this piston won't power, and then you'll just have a block sticking out of the floor, which isn't good. So, you, and you don't want that. So that, I'm, that's the only way to make it work, And but it's out of sync. So if you don't like it out of sync, then I'm sorry. If you don't like it not being sync, I'm sorry. But it has to be this way. So... This observer's for the, this side of the pistons, I will show you that when we do the side pistons. 
This repeater will turn on from an observer in there, from that piston as you can see there, right here. It will power this repeater, and then the game sees that this repeater turned on, so it will update this one, then it will update this one, and then go all through here, and then it will go up. Then those rail sees that this observer is on, so it'll turn on, then power all these. And I think there's a delay between when this rail turns on and this rail turns on. I think it's a couple micro ticks because this needs to turn on and then this turns on. I don't think it's instant, I think. But it's hardly noticeable. Or it's instant, I don't know. But I think it's instant. So then it will update this observer. Then it will power this observer, powering this piston. And at the same time, when this observer powers, this observer will power at the same time because they're both the same delay. Then this observer will power powering this observer, and then it would power this piston, powering this piston back there. I think I did that wrong. No, I did it in reverse. You need a repeater there, and then a dust there. If you have a dust there, this will power this dust, which would be there, and break it. So, yeah. And the dust is also there because if it was a block, you would bud this piston here. So, yeah. And that's how we power the set the f second layer to that's the first layer to power the second layer is actually a, a little bit cool you want to get out a, a gray block for a second I use cyan but I'm placing gray instead so you want you can use I'm actually gonna go back in the materials you need one there one there sorry same materials doesn't matter if you're color coding it, just make it cyan. So, to do this, what you need is to come in here, and you want to place an observer facing up, place a hopper underneath it, I believe, hopper? No, yeah. Actually, you want to place this observer there, place a hopper underneath, then place an, a dust, and then to power that piston, you need a slab. Place it in here, which will power this without powering any of these. Then we need to power this piston. So we place this here. You're probably wondering how we power this piston. It's actually because of, get a regular piston, this. So you're probably wondering how does this power this. It's like this bud. This will power this block. If we diagonally power this. But this piston will extend, and as it's extending, the game realizes that this needs to be extended because it's being powered diagonally. So it extends two micro ticks later, I believe, because that's how updates work. You can't have it facing down because there's going to be an observer here. Don't place it yet. And there's and you can't have it facing upwards because that's not how it works. And you can have it this way. And we don't want a rail because I don't want it messing up with this. And you're probably wondering. If this block is here, it's going to power the rails. That's actually really good, because that's actually really clever, is that the first layer needs two pulses, but the bottom layer here only needs one. So what that does is when this powers, it will extend them, power the rails, and with enough delay, it will actually extend these at the right time. All I need to do in the closing is, that's over here, is power the first storage, power this line, and then power the second storage. And then that's basically the whole closing. That's the gray circuit over there. And then the extension just comes over here from the piston with concrete powder, but that's for later. So that's all the inputs for the bottom. Now I'm gonna go into the side pistons for a second. I'm only doing this side. You need to place a hopper there. Actually, I'm not going to do this side. I'm actually going to show you why we I need that observer there. So you want to place, get out your cyan, place this here in this weird configuration. Don't, as you can see, that comparator is on over there. Don't place anything in there. So you need to do something first. So what you want to do is you see that this repeater is facing this way. It's not getting powered by anything. And then there's this comparator here and a hopper here with an item in it eventually. So you're probably wondering, there's going to be a sand thing here. You're probably wondering, how do we power it? What I do is, I do this. And you're probably thinking, well, it goes outside the boundary. But you don't see it over there. This is why. So you want to place this here. 
because the rest of the block is placed here, and the repeater says that reads that it's here, so extend through. Then what you want to do is you want to place an item, anything you want in here. And the comparator can read things from hoppers because there's item space. And then you see, if I turn this off, if you look at the repeater that's on through the left right side of the screen, when I place the item in, you see that this bedrock bar appears. And what this means is this is locked because this comparator is powering the side of this piston. So you can put this anything you want and you're probably gonna think it's gonna turn off. Well, it doesn't turn off because this is locking this. When you lock a door in real life, okay, you can't, like, when you lock a door in real life, and the, let's say you lock a lock, like you take a lock, you lock a lock, and you lock that lock, sort of, okay, picture a lock, on like on a door, you lock it, but that lock is being locked by the lock that you locked, so it's sort of like an infinite lock. Imagine that. You can't undo it unless you unlock one lock, but you have to unlock the other one. So that's basically kind of what this is. In order to turn this off, you have to turn this off. But this is not... It's kind of like a lock that's locking a lock, but the other lock's not locking the other lock sort of thing. So it's like, imagine you lock a door and then you can't unlock it sort of thing. That's what this is. And I want to show you that because it's one of my favorite parts of the door. And yeah, so that is the bottom necessities. And yeah, we're going to move on to the top now. So the top necessities is pretty much... I'm just going to show you also during the inputs. I almost forgot this. I'm just going to place what's on top of the input, on top of the quartz. You need a rail here that's for updating. And then you also, I also forgot, you need gray blocks and you need a gray block there. You can make it white, but I'm making it gray. You also want a three tick here, a one tick here, a dust, and a four tick here. Hold on, guys. Anyways, I'm back. I have to do something quickly. So you want to place three tick, one tick, four tick, and I'm gonna to get to the gray retraction later. So that's just what goes on those blocks. This block will have an observer soon, and those solid blocks are there. So pretty much, this is almost the layout done. But yeah, this is the entire layout done. So now let's move on to the red circuit. So the red circuit is the input, and the input was kind of difficult to do in the first place. So what you need is what I have in my hotbar. I'm actually going to get, get it from the chest. This can be sand in any block that's going to conduct redstone power. You're going to need that. Okay, so I'm going to place my lever. Your lever goes on the third block here, like that. Then you also want to get, I already have hoppers, comparator. So, this goes here, this is your input. You want to place a block here, two dust, so it'll power those two. Actually, power these three. So what will happen is this dust will power this piston, it's, and it's also powering this piston because it's powering the block. But then it's going to power this piston diagonally. And since it's powering this piston, this piston will update this piston. So this piston extends two micro ticks after this one. It looks like they're in sync, but it's hardly noticeable. You're probably going to have to slow down your gain ticks like down to solo. Then you're going to want a dust here, which will still power that, 
and we'll power this one because it'll power this one diagonal we'll power this. Then you need dust here. Now even though this dust powers this, it still won't mess up. This dust is used for a hopper here and an observer. Place this here and you want a redstone block there. Place two hoppers facing into each other. And then you want three items. You can put four items. Three items is makes it faster, but four items makes it more smooth looking. Just, just letting you know that. You want to place observer there, an observer there, an observer down, and an observer there. That's for a little bit later. Place a comparator here and a block. So you're probably thinking, how does this comparator take an output from the hopper? Is that comparators can read out from blocks. So if I retract this, it's on. That is the same thing as this. Which is pretty cool. So what? How this works is a pulse extender. Is this is being locked? So when I extend it and then it retracts, the game reads that there's not a redstone block here, so or anything powering this. So it's sending the items in here. But then the game reads this hopper is locked. So now the hopper is now locked, and you can send as many items as, as the hopper can fit into this hopper. So, once one item goes in, it will turn on. But, when it extends, it will do the same thing. The game reads that this is unlocked, so it will send the items back. This is locked, so you can send the items back. But, the reason why it's a pulse extender is, if one item goes in, if one I item left from here, it would still be on because there's still items in here. So, it's the way for all the items to come out. So, if I place, just don't do this. I'm going to place a stack of items. So you saw how the three items are really quick. So if I place this here, and I'm just going to remove this. So once I retract, see how it turns on? And then I'm going to wait a bit. See there's nine items. See how it stays on? Because with, stays on because if one item goes in, once one item, one item leaves, it doesn't really matter. So just place your three items back. So that is the um, side pistons here. What you also want to do is on the middle piston, you want an observer so it'll get detected from this piston when it gets fired. And with this, you want a glass block or any block that doesn't connect. So if it's a rest of block, and then it'll, when you power it, it'll break. And I don't want it to be an observer because I don't want it to break either. So just, I use a glass block. You can do wool. So, and then you need this here. And then you're almost done. You need a furnace. Put anything you want in it. Then a comparator, which will take the output from the furnace. Then you want a sticky piston and an observer. Make it face this way. Place this here, and just do this for the sake of now. Place a purple block there and a gray block there. Just do it now. It's easier now. So, to know if you did this right, you should have all your side pistons powered. This would have retracted. This is on. And this is extended. And this is one ticked. That's how you know if it's right. And to turn it off, you should see that this is off. You have three items in here, you have redstone block there, this is down, and this is retracted. That's how you know if it's done right. That's one side. So you do this side, is that this still locks this hopper, but that doesn't matter. You need a, this here, I need to get my red blocks, and a repeater, and dust. This will make the side out of sync, but it's one of the only ways to do it. There's two dust here, go observer, observer. You can, can't have a block, it needs to be dust for later. This dust needs to be there, otherwise you power this piston. And we'll break. So those are the side pistons done. And the input circuit. So, this side won't power because they're not connected. And what I mean by that is, is it gets power from this repeater, which is in the bottom. So if you flip it, nothing works. So just to show they did it right, 
It'll do this. Like that. So those are your side pistons and the input circuit done. Now we're going to move on to the bottom closing. So this circuit is a little bit dumb and I don't really like it. It's not my favorite circuit of the door. So pretty much you want to get this here. And before we start, I need you guys to place an observer here, a dust, this here, and that here. Just to start it off. Place an observer there, an observer there, go there, and that's it. That's for that part. What you want to do is when this powers, you want a block here, a block here, and even though this locks this hopper, it's fine because it's just a one tick pulse, so it's perfectly fine. So it won't lock or break anything. That will power the first set of rails, which will power the first layer, pushing them into this position. Now we need to one tick this. Now, the way I got the one tick pulse was actually from... I didn't connect it from this observer. I actually connected it from this comparator here, which is connected from the ball extender. So what I did was I went down. No, I went here. I went... Wait, what did I do again? Oh, yeah. So, you want to put this. It doesn't matter if it's a solid block. You want to go here. Then you want to go down here. And then place this. This is the exact right amount of delay to power these. So, the blocks will go in. And then it will push it up. So, you would have one block here. Then, all I have to do is power this dust. And that's the entire closing. To do that, what you need to do is place observer, two observers down, observer up, this way, this observer this way, observer this way, and done. That is your entire closing done. So what you should know is that if you do this right, I'm gonna remove this, is that you wanna place some pistons up here. You don't need to do this. If you're in creative, you can do this. If you're in survival, you can reset. I'll show you how. Flip the lever. You should see that it does this. So you should see you have three blocks here, three blocks here, and one sticking out of the floor. And then on the retraction, just imagine this getting pushed down from the top. That's where the pistons are there. After a little bit of delay, it will retract and then do that. So that's pretty clever. So that is actually the bottom closing done. I'm not really going to explain it. I kind of. Basically, the mind of the bottom closing is actually the storage. The brain of the bottom closing is the storage. The storage does everything, basically. It's just this thing and the storage, that's all. So now we're going to go into the top closing. So the top closing I haven't really memorized. So I might be checking it a lot. And yeah. The top closing is a pretty cool circuit. It's not my favorite. You want to place a comparator here for later. You want to place a repeater here, a repeater here, and a dust. That is, basically, this is like the brain. This comparator is for later. So, but like I said, so what this does is that you're probably thinking, you're you're probably thinking that this is the whole closing. It's actually not. To the save of the bottom, just um, remove the items from the hoppers. So when you flip the lever, it won't break. It will retract it. For that. Now you see that it extended. But we're missing some movements. Just to reset, remove this block. And then place a wool block back. And get one. A wool block here. Take your three storage blocks and put them back here. So they did a majority. The next part is actually from here. You want this here. You want a hopper. Then you want to go all the way to the end here. Place this. Then you want to place an observer down. Place a one tick repeater here. Then place this here, and I think it's another hopper. Yeah, another hopper. An observer going up. 
observer going this way. That is the entire top closing. So to know if you did it right, it should look like a weird loop. So, so, so it should look like this. So you have two blocks here, the side pistons, and you should have two, two by three sticky pistons. No blocks here, no sticky pistons here, and no sticky pistons here. That's how you know if the top closing work. When you unflip it, that's all it will do. So with the top closing, I'm just going to show you the extension circuit for the the quad quickly. So the way that this works is that it's actually pretty cool. And this is one of my favorite circuits of the door. I actually, okay, so you want to, this might be a little bit hard to place. Place an observer facing down. And you want to get four ticks here. Place a block here, an observer there. Block here. Place an observer here. Observer here and observer here. This is what this is for. And then, yeah, that, this vortex for the retraction. So what you should see is basically like a double extender. So you see this, and then what you should see is kind of a double extender thing. Like this. So what happens is this will power as a bud. From, and this rail updates it, so it will get one ticked. Then this will power one tick later. But since it's being budded, remember the similar bud mechanism to the bottom, we'll get a 1.5 tick pulse and 1.5 tick pulse don't one tick, so that's how it does. And then what happens is this is a three tick, which allows it to work. Even though the three tick gets two pulses from the four tick, it doesn't give two pulses, which is really good because it's powered and it'll stay on longer. And this is just for the retraction. That's why their blocks are there. So then it will retract it again because it's four ticks and it gives two pulses. So it'll turn on, and then since it turns off again, it'll give two pulses. It doesn't work with that with one ticks and two ticks, so it'll retract. And this will not power it because it will actually, if you get rid of these repeaters, okay, it would actually not power it because it's too fast. So this is what the three tick and one tick are for. You'll power this at the exact right time. I'm actually going to show you how it works. So, you power, you'll power at the right time retracting it. I'll show you one more time. So, I'll do it a couple times so you can see. I'm triggering it from the comparator, turning subtract or not. And the last time. So now you reset your pistons. I just wanted to show you that this is one of my favorite parts of the door. So that's with the top, and now we're gonna move on to the um, bottom, the rest of the bottom closing part of it. So this is where, this is the most complicated circuit in the door. And that's why we need this double extender and the locking here. So what you want is, I think this, you want a regular piston and concrete powder here and here. This just does a surprising amount. What this does is that it will push it up and then since it's a gravity block, it will get pulled back down. And this will give it a, I think it's a two tick pulse. It will push up and then it falls after a while, so this will give it a two tick pulse. And then since this gets a pulse, it gets turned to four ticks, because it's four ticks. Then we'll run through the double extender, pushing our pistons up to this level. Then what we need to do is power the storage to push the, the solid blocks in, so we can power them through this input. And that was a little bit challenging. So what I did is that you have to do a little bit of weird stuff. From here, you want a three tick repeater. You want this here and a this here. This will power it, but then you need a pulse to this. So the way I did that is I have this here, 
and this, and then this is a Fortic. Now you're probably thinking that for this Fortic is going to lock this because of this, therefore it's not going to do the plus and extender. This is a falling edge, so it will give more delay. This The bedrock part will appear, and even though it does, it still won't break it. And then I can't remember what this Fortic's on. I think that that Fortic is on a block. Okay. So, we're going to place a Fortic here. You want to place your trap door. And then an observer. Now, this torch, you might have thought that it would power the observer and extend them. But since an observer is a transparent block, it will actually work. So, what you should see here is... This is pretty much the entire closing and the mainly the the one of the parts of the door. So just place pistons here, or I'll sh actually I'll show you how to reset it. So you want to do this? Oh, I forgot. I forgot that I dis dis disabled the bottom. Sorry about that. Let me do this quickly. Now, place your th three items back. Actually, to disable it, what you can do is actually place a redstone block there. That will make it so it doesn't power. Because the comparator, there's an update in 17W, snapshot, 17W15A, I think. It was back in 1.8, I think. And where observe, um, Red some wealth with power compare and lock them from the side. I don't know how that works. So, and to disable the top, just remove that sand. Remember to place it back after. So, we're stupid. Because I forgot to remove that red some block. So, you probably think that this didn't do anything. It's actually what happen and the side pistons here are also powered which means if I would have powered the top I would have done the entire closing and actually what you can do is place the sand back close the top and now what you can do is this open your door you can do this which helps with the quad extender on the top and yeah, so we have a majority of the door done. Now, the next circuit I'm going to do is the top quad circuit. So, the quad circuit is pretty, I guess you could say complicated, but not really. I'm going to explain this the best I can, because it's quite weird to how it works. So I actually made a mistake earlier. This, get rid of this, or tick, and get this out. I'll place a comparator here. You probably wonder why does it have to be a comparator? If I'm gonna have to disable the bottom, so when this gets one tick, observers don't accept one tick pulses. Like if I place this here, and then I th this won't work. I don't think. Okay. So this is a one-tick pulse. It didn't turn on, but if it was a repeater, it would have turned on. Because what the game works is that comparators will not take one-tick pulses now from torches. So if you sent a two-tick pulse to a torch, it would actually not power the comparator. I th that's because comparators now accept, I think it's 1.5-tick pulses. So a one tick pulse from a repeater won't work. Originally, if you sent a two tick pulse, you can actually one tick a piston. Like this. But now it's been short, shortened to 1.5. And remember, 1.5 tick pulses don't work. So, you, yeah. So, it will get one ticked. And since a comparator can't accept one tick pulses, it can accept one tick pulse. It can accept the pulse from two tick. Four, three tick or four tick. So you're probably wondering where does the three tick or whatever pulse come from? It comes from here. So it goes to from this three tick to this one tick. And even though this is one tick, it still gets three tick pulse. Powering this does powering this comparator. 
which I use this trick a couple times in the door. I use it in the extra moves, which I'll get to after. Then from here you want a four tick. Sticky piston, this is why we don't want to block, so power the sticky piston. Place a block on top. Then you want to I can't remember. You want to actually place a one tick repeater here. Then you want a one observer facing up with a dust. Now what you want is it to face this way. And I think I did that wrong. No, I made a mistake. Place a dust here. And then a four tick here. This is for retracting the pistons after it's retracting. Now to power this here, what you need to do is go down one here, and then I can't remember what this is on. It's on a one tick going into a hop. So you want a one tick here. We're gonna have to reuse this hopper eventually. It's a good thing we don't. The only thing we're powering is this. So then you want this. Now what you want is a cool, clever circuit that I made. Place an observer down, place a repeater, place this here, and then this is the only lamp you need in the door, place it here. And you're probably wondering why does it need to be a lamp? Lamps actually give two pulses, and you're probably wondering how. Well, the game, what it does is when you power it, turn on, when it gets powered, but then it will act like a little pulse extender, and then it will turn off after a while. So you can see it turns on, turns off, takes bits. So it gets one tick. So if I give it a one tick, it will like pretend this is an observer, turns on, and then turns off after a bit. So you place this here, this here, and then this here. So this will do a majority of the quad. This little thing that I built and you built is actually a majority of the quad. So what I'm about to show you is the majority of the quad. What you want to do is power this piston and then retract it. Um, I don't, I think I did that wrong. Um, let me just see. Oh, I see the problem. Okay. The problem is we need to remove this observer, place a lamp here, place this here, and that there. To, to reset, you actually don't need to reset. All you need to reset is that. You're probably wondering it's gonna break. It's not. It shouldn't. There we go. And then retract. So it just did a majority of the quad. Just that, this little circuit here did pretty much the entire thing. All I need now is just one pulse to this hopper and then it's done. So, done. And then the extra moves. And the way I did that was actually pretty hard. So to do that, it it's in a weird position. Okay. What you want to do is place dust here. Two four ticks. This will perfectly time it. I believe it's a block. Yeah. Place this here. And you want to come in here and place that. I believe that's how it is. So what you have just built yourself is the entire quad extender. This is really small. All the quad extender is, is this block, this observer, this dust goes from here to here to here. That's all it is. It is really small and works really well. I'm going to show you it again. So this should be the entire quad. If you did some, if you did something wrong, then it, okay. Before, don't test it. 
Because if mine breaks, yours might break. So yeah, so power. You should see only one block because you didn't put the storage in. If you did, that's fine. And then we'll trap it. Okay, so now you can test it. It worked. If it broke, rewind the video and see where you messed up. And if it did work, congrats. So that is the entire quad on the top done. Now let's move on to the second last circuit of the door, the green. So this is a pretty, I don't like the circuit, I hate it. So you want to come where this observer is, place this here, you want to get a lime wool, you want to place it here, which will get power from the Fortic, here, then you want to go up five observers, it's four, five, and then place a dust on the top. Now you're going to have to do something a little bit weird, and I consider this a bug. So you want to place that there, block there, a dust, yeah, a dust, an updater piston, which will update another piston, down here, with this observer here. So, when I was building this door, there was a bug in the game in where you can one-tick a an observer with a piston, like so. See how I powered this. But then there's another bug, you're thinking that's not a bug, but there's a bug in the game in where if you retract it, it will actually retract it. So watch. Okay, let me redo this. See how it powered this dust? I'll show you again. Well, in some locate, well, that's only if you give it a zero tick, but I give it a one tick. So see, it powers that, and then... Let me try to get this to work. Let me use the torch instead. So... Maybe it isn't a bug. Well, there's a bug in the game in where... I thought this was a bug, but it isn't. But there's a bug in the game in where you will power the piston the one tick, it'll power this, but, and then when it's retracting, it will actually update the observer, powering this dust again. So, it gives two pulses. I had trouble with that while building this door, because it was super weird, and yeah, it's a weird bug, I think it's locational, I don't know. So, yeah, there's, I don't, if, it is, if you're building this in a location where it doesn't work, um, I don't have a fix. Um, yet, you could try to place a block on top of this, and maybe a, um, wait, I think I did this incredibly wrong, no, sorry guys, um, replace this with a slab, my mistake. So, this will push down, powering this. And this trapdoor was actually used twice. So, to do this, you want to place a... It's a weird circuit. You need a dropper or a note block. So, I'm going to do a dropper. If you're in 1.13, you can use a note block. If you're not in 1.13 for some reason, like you, and you should get into it because this is amazing, 1.13. Look at all... Of this beautiful stuff then you can place a no block here it'll work the same but the problem with it it's gonna play music so I think and we should set it really high there we go for fun then you want to place an observer down can't remember where this goes okay so then it goes across down this way, this way, this is why we don't want, we want the slap. So I don't want it to one tick and then not work. Hold on a second. I have to do something. Then you want this here, and then you want a line block. But before we do that, I need to check something. Okay, 
So behind the, before you place it, actually break that, place a vortex here. Place an observer up, and then a block. So what this will do, this circuit, is it will actually retract the entire thing. So the way that this works is that I'm actually going to get some pistons to show you this. So then you want to place three pistons. No, you don't want to do it. I'm going to show you how this works. So place this here. Okay, so you'll get one ticked and then there's an input here that will power this, which will, that's why there's a four tick, it will give two pulses. And then this will retract after the long delay back here that goes back into the rail then the way that the retraction work is that we power the double extend with the four tick under there it will come up and power this but then we have enough delay from here which is one two three four five six seven eight kind of eight ticks of delay so what will happen is if i is that it'll be down here this will have a block on its face and pretend this is the floor it will come up power from the double extender and then at the right time it will power this with a one tick but at the same time retract this and then redo this and that's what this green circuit does so it works really well and that's what i like about it so I'm going to show you a working and what you can actually do is remove your Watson block, remove that and just power your door. And I was missing the storage so just place your storage blocks in there and then unhook it. So, even though this made sound, it doesn't matter. And you're seeing that there's just one block blocks here. That is the bottom done. So, you can fill this in. All you need, the last circuit left of the door is the extra moves on the top. And we kind of have most of that. And you're probably wondering, how, what do you mean? I have most of that. Or we have most of that in this case. Is that all I do is I fire the closing circuit and that's it. So what we do is the orange circuit is that you want to place, so you want to come back over here in this area, I'll give you a little time to find it, I'll give you about five seconds. Okay, once you've found it, place an observer here, a uh, sticky piston here, observer, this will get a four tick pulse, so it will extend. Now we need a T flip flop. Now, if we don't know what a T flip flop is, then I will show you. But if you do know, I will put a time in. If you don't want to look at how this T flip flop works, and you're really bored of it, because you already know how it works, you can go in the description and look for the time, and I will tell you how it works. And you can go to that time, which is the one sec, about one sec, one or two seconds before I finish. So yeah. So the way that a T flip flop works is that it will power on one edge and then not power on the other. So T flip flops have evolved massively. If I place this here and this, and then get this, this is a kind of a T flip flop. It'll go up flag and it will power this which will give it an update powering this and then if I power it again you see how it doesn't power it it will only power this block but it doesn't power this repeater so just to show it easily play. get a piston extension and now you don't that is what how this works and that's how all five by fives work they work with a T flip flop on the top but if you need multiple like multiple quads that is what called a counter and i used the counter in here which is kind of this system but i made 
a better system in a 6x6 store I made with Mikaloki Redstone. I'll link the video in the description. You can also check out his channel, which is also in the description of the video in, the, in my description here. So, you want to place this, and now you want your orange blocks, and you, I made a mistake, place an orange block there, an orange block to the chest, and remove one gray block. Sorry about that. But that's fine. So, you want to place a block here, and then a sticky piston here with a piston observer there. So this is our T flip flop. This will extend powering this block, retracting this, moving the observer from here to here. Then when this powers again, it'll power this, moving it from here to here so it doesn't power what's here. And that's how does this is just how it works. So I actually thought I was going to need this area for a toggle when making it, but I turned out I didn't, which is pretty nice. So, this is the T-Full Flop, the main system of the extra moves. You want to place a 4-tick repeater here, a 2-tick repeater. Now, you want to disable the bottom, so I can show you how this works. And, this will pull the blocks up from the ceiling. And then all we need to do, which is the last thing of the door, is just power this piston here on, and then when the closing finishes, it will turn off. So that is the only thing left of the door, and good thing there's a lot of space and there's enough space left. So we want to come back where this comparator is, and you want to place a dust here. And this is kind of a similar circuit to what I used in the quad. I made it. it just did that, yeah. So this comparator would be getting a bunch of one ticks from here. It's this line. It will get a one tick from the quad extension, and we'll also get a one tick from quad retraction. But then the only time where it doesn't get a one tick is here. This will be given a four tick pulse, and then it will go into a two tick to shorten delay. But it will still be given a 4 tick pulse because it starts with a 4 tick. You can do this, but I think this looks better. So this will power. And since it's on long enough, like I discussed over here about this comparator, is that this will comparator will turn on. And then we need a block here. And since it turns on, it can act as like another repeater. So this comparator is basically blocking off one ticks from going into the extra moves, creating a massive mess on the top. Breaking all the T flip flops, breaking the closing, breaking the quad, and then it's just a mess. So this is good that we have a comparator. If we had a repeater here, it would just break. So get a comparator, place it there. So you're probably thinking how we're gonna do this is that we use a kind of a cool dropper system. It's called an RS Snore Latch. You want to place one dropper here, and then a... Just place a dropper here, and a dropper facing this way, so they're facing into each other, sort of thing. Then you want to place an item inside of the... So if, stand where I am, and then you want to go into the right dropper, and place an item. Now what that does, is that it will get power from the extra moves, moving it to this dropper. And you're probably thinking, couldn't you just place a dropper here and do it? Well, the way that the, the way that droppers work are pretty weird. This, if it was there, if the dropper was here instead, it would be, I think it's a locational issue, a locational issue, in where the item would actually go into the dropper. But if you place the two droppers facing into each other, like, here, then it would keep the item in this dropper that would be here, and it will not pulse at all. So that's why we need a block which will power this observer, I mean this dropper, powering its item, which will send its item to here to get the output. We need this little space here, place a 
thing here, then before you place a comparator, just remove this observer because it would break a bit. Then place your comparator, and you're probably you're probably thinking that that's the whole door done. It's actually not. We need one little piece left. We need two observers left, and we need to power this dropper here so it will retract and redo the quad. So to do that, we detect it from here. And you're probably thinking that it's gonna break on the closing because the item won't actually be in here. It would be in this dropper. So this will just click over and over until the item's actually in here. So yeah, so that's why you might hear a lot of clicking in the door. And that is actually the entire door done. So remember to put your storage blocks in there. And I'm gonna test the top. What you wanna do is grab your, you wanna be get compare, prepared. So what you want to do is you want to get a really good pickaxe if you're in survival, but if you're in creative, you can do this. Power, disable your bottom, power, power the top. And that's what the, if you heard that click, that was this dropper from these observers. And then when the quad fully extends down these blocks, place blocks on top of them. That's why if you're in survival, break them, it'll keep, break them and then place them really quick here. Okay, so then track. Place them again and break. If you can't do it, then and then the T flip flop fixed. So now you can undisable your bottom, and now you have a super small 5Y 5x5 with a volume of 675 blocks. So now you can go impress your friends with your new 5x5 door. And you can say, I'm giving you permission to say that it's yours. You can say that you're the god at redstone. Because you built things with hopper, with repeater lockings, pulse extenders, teeth flip flops, comparator checking systems, arsenal latches. Say anything you want. You can even put your head on it. Like this. And if you want to see me live and not on YouTube video, you can actually come on the redstoner. Um, server the IGN is I'm gonna show you BRB I'm disconnected I'm gonna show you so if I go here you just go to redstoner.com in your server address click done and then join the server you will be welcomed in the server it'll say welcome whatever your name to the server and they will tell you what to do, and if not, um, then um, what you can do is do slash p auto, so slash p auto, this here, and no, you do slash cr here, and then slash, and then slash p auto. This will get you your first plot, and then you can start building. If you want to add people to your plot to let them build with you, do slash p add and then name. I'm going to do, let's say cube. I'm not going to hit enter because I don't want it to be added. So, yeah, you can do this. And you can come to my plot at slash p space h guardian gamer. Or you can come to my bigger plot with this command to find my 9 by 9 door tiny 2x2 two two hipster door I showed a while ago and yeah so to the final test of our door is right now you have to wait for all these pistons and then you can open it So your door now works. Congratulations in building it. If you had any problems in understanding it, let me know in the comments. If you enjoy the tutorial, leave a like. And I will try to get my 9x9 door to be finished really quickly. And remember to sub 
and turn on notifications for more redstone tutorials. I just uploaded a while a bit ago my 300th win in Bed Wars. There will be two live streams coming up in a while from now, maybe in about the next four months, maybe less, maybe more. In about my all doors from two by two to ten, basically an entire plot reveal review and also includingly a live stream for my 100 stars in bed wars so hopefully you enjoyed the video like subscribe like i said already and i'm stupid to finish off the video i'm gonna show you the door working one more time and that will be all see you next time